Hello, welcome to Sonic Talk. Today, Wednesday, the 12th of August, 2015. Uh, today is the last show for a week because next week I'm going to be on a holiday, so I will not be here and I haven't got anything to fill the space. So you'll have to make do without me or us next week. Uh, uh, so I want to say uh, enjoy yourselves this week. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, then if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, then next time we do get a Sonic Talk or any other uh, Sonic content, you'll be able to uh, get a notification. So do subscribe if you're watch it via uh, YouTube or if you're on iTunes subscribe to the RSS feed you can uh, look up Sonic Talk on iTunes and it will show up there uh, we thoroughly recommend it to you I want to say also thank you very much to our chat room we've got a lot of people in the chat room for a, 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 an August Wednesday afternoon That's uh, they should probably all be working but um, like me you're doing something that's like work, but not really work at all. And I'm sure my guests will uh, hopefully concur. Uh, also, um, this week we uh, uh, have Isotope sponsoring the show as uh, as is standard at the moment. Um, we will be giving away a copy of Trash 2 and also announcing the winner for last week's Trash 2 competition. So do stay tuned for that. But anyway, let's get back to our guests. So I'll start over there with uh, Mr. Dave Spears in the uh, GeForce Software Synth Cave where he's extracting the souls of the very electronics and putting them into software like some evil mad scientist. How are you, Dave? Yeah, all right. Something along those lines. Yeah. We'll butcher it. <laughs> I feel you should be wearing a uh, white coat or something. Have a clipboard at the least. No, look, I'm in. Mean, Are you wearing a, you're flying the Universal Audio flag? Because. Mm, 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 oh, you got an Apollo. Oh, oh, Which one? Hey. Apollo 2. Is that a quad? Oh, very nice. Yeah, uh, I think so. 16? Yeah, quad. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, smart move. They do sound yeah. lovely. You've made it's not right. come out of the box yet, but it's mm, it just looks mm. nice. It's like opening a piece of Apple gear. Yeah, it's, it's that waxed cardboard nice. thing, isn't it? There's definitely something about it. Yes. Well, I'm very jealous of you. I'm just well, think uh, yeah, it's for a new system. Uh, so I've decided to freeze my computer in time, as I keep telling everybody, and then we'll get a new system. But I haven't decided on the computer yet, so wow. there you go. Right. Hmm. Mac Minis are pretty good <laughs> these days. Yeah. yeah. Might yeah. not have enough grunt for what you need, though, I'm guessing. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Who knows? PC. PC, Can't yeah. Oh, that that up. said Gaz Ooh. Williams. Ooh. That just ain't going to happen, Gaz. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm with you, Dave. <laughs> anyway, while yeah. I was there, that was, that was, in fact, Gaz Williams, who's uh, also a professional bass player, music producer, music technologist. He looks like he's surrounded. He's in the kitchen cooking up some good stuff by the looks of things. <laughs> How are you, Gaz? Yeah, really good. Thank you. I've got some. I got this. Um, I got the SQ1 plugged in. I got the Volker keys plugged into the SQ1. So just set that off. Going through. Let's see. Can you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Whoa! What is that going into? Wow. What is that? That that little pedal is if you can find one, time bender, Digitech time bender is bonkers. It's like a harmonized delay, but you can run the delay time down to 10 milliseconds and then uh and then you can change what the harmonized notes are. So you can get these really weird uh set that up again. You get this kind of ringing, but it's kind of quite nice when like it gets going. Like carpet strong stuff, I guess. Yeah. It's not, it's not a oh, yeah, it's, it's not going to work now. You've it's had not going to work. No. Oh. <laughs> no, it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> I no. can't hear anything. Can you hear anything? Oh, there we go. Can you hear this? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. It probably sounds awful down there, does it? it it's, sounds... it's not as full frequency as perhaps you're getting it, Pratt. Uh, oh. But uh, I, I like. <laughs> can you control all that stuff by MIDI as well? No. Ah. Yeah, that's a shame. Boo. <laughs> but it's just, you know, it's just one of these things. It's such an interesting pedal. 
And I've got like a expression pedal, the old trusty EV5, and you can kind of morph the harmonies between different harmonies on the pedal. These oh, things. Neat. All right. Sounds like someone someone's fainted on a church organ at the moment. <laughs> but I, it sounds, I'd like to hear that in uh, in true true definition. But uh, thank you very much for sharing that. Is that part of an ex, uh, a rig you're setting up to play out, or what's the what's the score? It's um, I I want to do my mate's head in really, so that's why I'm putting it together. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'd do, I thought I'd do your lot head in first just to test it. Right. Well, thank you. I, I, I've never heard of that pedal. What's it called? A Digitech? What? Time Bender. Time Bender. Nice. Time Bender. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Gaz. That's awesome. Uh, are you still writing about this stuff on your blog at gazwilliams.me? Uh, yeah, actually. Oh. I've just done a, a tiny update about the, the show we're doing next week, which I've been banging on about the Jodorowsky's Holy Mountain, brand new soundtrack that we're playing live at the Green Man Festival next week. So if any of you are there... Midnight Cinedrome. Oh, that sounds it's gonna terrifying. Be, it's <laughs> going to be a, a psychedelic brain melt of the highest order. Brilliant. Well, I look forward to that. Anyway, thank you for joining us, Gaz. And of course, I, he liked it so much, he couldn't. we couldn't keep him away. Mr. Ty Unwin, who is a composer there in his synth cave. As we said last week, it was uh, we, were, we were wondering who was out synthing here when you think Ty just pipped it on the synth cave uh, stakes. How are you, Ty? I'm fine, but is it really fair on my second week to make me follow Gaz after that? I mean, <laughs> what am I meant to say or do? Or Haven't you got just you a know? note lined up that you can just fire up all that stuff? <laughs> One note pad? Not that, no, unfortunately not. But um, no, hi. Yes. Good week. Thank you. So you're yes, working on so last week. I you're working it. on a lot of uh, you're in 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 mid. Sorry. You're... <laughs> It's got a life of its own. It has. So you're are you in are you in mid compose at the moment? I I'm I'm always in mid compose, yeah. It's a permanent state that I'm in. Wow. There isn't so really you, a life outside of mid compose. Are you finding that you when you're not in the studio in between working there, do you have like is it all in your head and you have to kind of if you think I've just thought of a, a motif or something and you have to sort of get it down. How do you how do you uh, tap that? Genuinely, there is there is not a lot of time that I'm not in the studio. To be fair, wow. I know that sounds awful, awful to say, but I'm kind of in the studio all the time. And um, when I'm not in the studio, yeah, I'm always thinking about whatever project I'm working on at that moment why, in time. Why would you want to be anywhere else? Look what you got in there. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, you'd like to be lots of other places. Uh, no, it's it, it's yeah, my head is it's forever forever going. And um, I've just got lots of uh, things on iPhone of just humming tunes all ah, over so the place. Ah, you so do, you do that thing where you kind of dictaphone it up and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Gotcha. But, I mean, to be fair, there's a kind of laptop system that kind of goes around with me wherever, wherever I go. If I'm away for more than, uh, you know, definitely more than a day, the laptop kind of tends to go with me. So, you know, a little setup. Right. So, which is quite sad, really, but... <laughs> Well, not really. Yes. I mean, it's you know, it's it, it, if it's a job, and it means that you can uh, enjoy, you know, your collection and and and, and think about CS eighties. Then you know, yeah, do whatever <laughs> it takes, as far as I'm concerned. No, it's it's yeah. Sometimes it would be nice to be able to get away from it and kind of switch my my head off, but that doesn't kind of happen. When I do go, eventually go on holiday, it's normally a good at least week, ten days before my head eventually does kind of switch off. By which time, we're normally just coming home again so yeah um, well you know what I you sat, need you need longer holidays like a, yeah exactly no i know <laughs> that i know that like feeling i mean i was going to talk about that a little bit later about the whole sort of summer switch off and how you clear your head but uh, uh but we'll, we'll maybe we'll come back to that because we've got a couple more topics to uh, check out oh. and i think this being the first of them
This is the news that Overbridge 1.0 has finally made it to public. Well, it's been released for Ableton Live at least. Oh, I've just realised that my speakers are on. I'll turn those off. So as we've seen, uh, we've had a couple of looks at it with uh, Chenk from uh, uh, Nam and uh, Music Messer. And you know, this in itself is interesting, the fact that it can basically pre-configure aggregate devices without having to create an aggregate device. It's a sort of meta-aggregator. But this is the bit that looks very interesting to me because, as, uh, as you may have gathered from my Analog 4 review, I found it almost totally impossible to edit the thing because of the size of the screen and the accesses, access to the parameters. But this VST plugin really opens that. That looks like it's probably rhythm rather than analog four. But you know, so you're able to kind of break out of the box. And it seems to me that this, and it actually looks like it's beautifully executed as well. So you'll be able to store your patches with the DAW and you know just come out away from that tiny 16 by whatever it is, 32 by 8 LCD. Anyway, I won't play it all, but I know I know that uh, some uh, um, this actually you know the, the news is out. Basically, you can get the uh, Overbridge software. If I switch it up here, uh, you see what we've got. It's Overbridge 1.0 for Ableton Live. Overbridge for all hosts is now in uh, beta, so they haven't uh, haven't done that, but they have released this first one. I know they've been under a lot of pressure because they've been talking about it for months, and it's obviously been a lot harder than they anticipated. I know that, Gaz, you were pretty excited by this, because, I mean, this old idea of just removing all the driver nonsense and what have you and just getting host mode stuff is really the future. I mean, you know, I, I think Electron should receive some sort of industry-wide... Uh, award for this because I think this is such a significant development in music technology. It's so ah, it's such a brilliant thing. It, it the, the fact that you can run all your electron devices just you know just simple USB aggregate them all in and it not mess. Actually, I'd say an aggregate. It do, you don't have to create aggregates. You just it the software sees it. It's so clever. It's such a nice system. And the fact that it is multi-channel audio, MIDI, all through that single USB cable, uh, and just a really beautiful software interface as well. Um, watching Cenk's, uh, uh, Cenk as well, is just one yeah, of the great data demonstrators <laughs> on the planet. He's brilliant. But, um, uh, to, to, to have all of that working in that lovely interface, uh, gosh, uh, it really sets a new standard. I think other manufacturers are going to have to raise their game to meet that. You know, I think it's a major, major step forward. Yeah, I mean, it almost makes me want to think about. Uh, I consider getting an analog four again, or getting you know, uh, and working with this because I think this would completely change the way that it works. I don't know, um, Ty, have you got any analog kit with you? I mean, is is that something that you've been waiting? The electron for? stuff. Yeah. The, the electron um i've got a machine drum right uh, which obviously the generation that doesn't so that won't support it obviously it's the one before um the i mean i i love the electron stuff the only issue i kind of have is is uh the same argument that everyone on here has had before which is when you use electron stuff you have to work in the electron way and yes. um which is great, and I, I, with the machine drum, I don't have an issue with that. But uh, when I've seen the other, you know, kind of like the Octa Track, and um, I don't know, it's just not well, the no, way that my head works, really. Well, and, maybe now that uh, changes. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. Because I mean, this Gaz is exactly right that if they can pull this off, and it seems that they have, if they really do pull it off and it works, um, that is fantastic. I mean, it's just that kind of integration is the way that everything's got to go, really. Yeah. You know, it really does have to go that way. And um, Gaz is exactly right. You know, but again, though, it is if it works, because, you know, I've had stuff that is supposedly integrating. I mean, all the, you know, the virus stuff, how the access virus is meant to integrate with the computer. And that was just a... Yeah, well, that was early days, wasn't it? That's perhaps before. Yeah, it was, but they still haven't sorted it properly. I mean, it still doesn't. You know, even now, it still doesn't work. That they've been know, too busy well. modeling and, modeling amplifiers. 
amplifiers. Yeah, great. Yeah. Really useful. I'm, I'm, I'm um, optimistic that it'll work because they haven't rushed it out, though, have they, since announcing absolutely. it? Absolutely. They've really taken their time to develop it. So. Absolutely, which is good. That's what that's what we you know that's what we want to hear. But I think if it works, then genuinely, uh, yeah, I I would I would look at electron stuff again, almost kind of purely as a a kind of interface and and sound. Yeah, I mean it tool. does have it does have a great sound. I know, Dave, you Absolutely. you sort of went the other way. Well, not what, in terms of creating hardware control, certainly the Fat Boy, and 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 you know being. Uh, not involved, but I'm um, involved to a degree with the uh, Imposca 2 controller. Did you, what do you think about this? I mean, because it seems to me like the perfect marriage, it, it, or at least uh, going down the right direction, it's certainly well in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, it, like I say, I think this stuff sounds great. And again, just to echo what everybody else has said, the only criticism I've ever heard is the kind of operating architecture. Uh, and looking at this video, it seemed that. You know, we know certain things work great in software and we know certain things work great in hardware and this seems to be the best the best of both worlds in a way. It was quite interesting. Uh, when I was doing some... I kind of beta tested the M2 controller for the guys who made that and there was this issue with certain formats and with bi-directional control and I noticed that they seemed to have it completely sussed. Uh, it, was, it was more of a format thing. I forget which format it was. It was so long ago, but it was like, you know, either VST or AU kind of wouldn't deal with bi-directional control, whereas the other format would. would. But in this, this I, I think he was showing the VST version, and that all seemed to be great. I was like, oh, I wonder about how they've done that. But maybe that's the thing they've done with Ableton. I don't know. But, yeah, yeah, smart, very smart, very clever. Um, not a lot else to say, really. <laughs> anyway, so Dave, as uh, we were saying... So have you heard the electron stuff? Have you used them at all? Any of the electron stuff? You know, it's funny. I really wanted to get hold of the little eight jobby because I thought, oh, you know, it's a kind of portable thing to take around. Like a kind of grown up OP1, I suppose. I do beg your pardon there. That was a little bit of an oversight there. Those of you who are easily <laughs> offended. <laughs> Obviously, really, really, really crucial bit of uh, information needed while well, I'm in the middle of a live broadcast. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, but. Coming back to the coming back to the the whole notion of this, I mean, it seems like you know uh, if they get this absolutely right. I mean, obviously the, the the downside is it only works with some of their stuff, doesn't it? And that is a, a shame that you know you can't think. Well, actually, maybe we could uh, improve the uh, p the the performance and the, the the way that we interface with all of their stuff. I mean, I guess maybe it could at least be the VST controller for all of that. That would be pretty awesome. But it's all of their it's it's all of their their latest stuff, which I can understand that there has to be a cutoff point somewhere. And I think it does work with all of their current line, doesn't it? There's nothing that's current. That no, the Octatrack it doesn't, it doesn't work with the does Octatrack. Does it not with the Octatrack? Just the analog range. The analog range. So anything, okay. analog keys, analog four, and the the analog rhythm. Ah, okay. Well, I don't know. There has to be a cutoff somewhere. So I mean, you know, I mean, I. As I said, I've got the machine drum, and I don't feel I'm not that annoyed the fact it doesn't work with that because it's kind of you can only I don't know. As I said, there has to be a cutoff point somewhere, but um, I think look the range that it does work with, I think is uh, they're great instruments in themselves. Um, so I, I think they're onto a winner, definitely onto a winner. Yeah, I think one I of the so. one of the big one of the big improvements it looks like to me as well is the one of the confusing things with the uh, the uh, the electron workflow is the uh, the sound pool with the analog you know where you copy things from the plus drive so the plus drive is uh, the electron terminology for sort of like deeper storage if you will and then you can bring things out of the plus drive into like uh, maybe I think maybe it's a faster buffer I'm not entirely sure what what it is but um, the software looks like it makes a, a much nicer uh, logical way of because you can see what's in your sound pool and you can see what's in your yeah. uh, plus drive and you can drag and drop from it now I find when I've been using analog uh, electron machines I found that that side of things has been a bit confusing so i think that having that drag and drop gui will really improve that and i mean and that makes a lot of sense when you're looking at uh, the analog rhythm because even though it's an analog drum machine you can also have um samples on each analog voice as well so that sample library again ha uh, takes the drag and drop because computers drag and drop you know that's such a great you know well that's, way of that's what we're used to that's what you, we're used to these days 
Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the days of going back to um, <laughs> to scrolling, scrolling through pages through and a little, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a little screen yeah. this big. Thank yeah. God they're gone. You know. Yeah. Um, well, that's. I mean, that's the only thing that made years ago. I had a. Uh, I used an S. One of my main sampling things was an S six thousand. The only thing that made that even vaguely usable was the, the Axis software, which again just you know kind of just integrated in quite a basic way, but it made the whole sampler usable. Whereas without that, even though it had a big screen, gosh, that was a pain in the <laughs> proverbial. I'll let I'll let Nick say that word after. Yeah, well, maybe I'll try not to say any more of those words. I do apologise once again, but uh, okay. I'll have edited that out by the time anyone sees this on the stream. So you'll just have to wonder oh, what word it was that I actually <laughs> said. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's available now. You, can, I mean, the thing is, this is free as well. Obviously, you need uh, um, an Electron product that is uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to work. But I mean, some of the features mm -hmm. really are impressive, and you know, this is some. That also, but the other thing that came out, which was also interesting, is Roland have updated their. Ira MX1 system as well to version 1.3, which now adds uh, the following devices to be able to be plugged in in the host mode as well, which is um, the JDXA, XI, GI, Jupiter 50, Jupiter 8, FA06, FA08. So you can add those into it. So I'm wondering how much further it is, you know, because that, how much how much further it has to go before they can just do a host mode and we get the iPad connectivity that we were all getting excited about. It's It's interesting, isn't it, when you look at that list, that there is existing things in the in the Roland product category, uh, the the Gaia springs to mind that has got that USB audio MIDI functionality, but it's not in the list there. So, this does kind of make you think about uh, Roland have been trumpeting the fact that their newer systems use a 96k internal sort of sample rate. So perhaps that's the restriction with the MX1 because uh, the Gaia I, I think would could only do 48k maximum on the uh if you use, use it as an audio interface is the integra 7 in there am i in no. that listening no it's not it's, uh, it's not it's just the xa xi gi 50 80 fa06 and fa08 hmm. okay so yeah not all so of them 50 and the 80 in there why isn't the integra 7 in there Good point. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, good point. I don't know why. I guess. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't answer that. But I, I would like to be able to. Mm. So I mean, it's been my little cause that I'm pushing, and I'm continuing to push this idea that USB is used more and more for this purpose, for this, you know, bi-directional audio. That's one of the cool things, isn't it, with the MX1? The fact that you can send things back to the device as well, you know, that it is bi-directional. Um, so you can plug effects units in to the MX-1, again, with just a single USB cable. You know, it's, a, it's a very attractive way of working. So yeah, and, definitely. And parallel between Electron and, and Roland with this, uh, they're certainly leading the way with that. Well, you never know. Maybe uh, Roland and Electron could get together, so at least you could connect both of those things together. That would be pretty awesome. They but... should do that. They should do that. That's a great idea. What <laughs> synthesizer companies talk to one another? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that's. When possible. did that last happen? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, I will now. Uh, now it's time to a uh, word from our sponsors. If you want to find out about the competition, stay tuned. So Isotope course sponsoring the podcast we want to tell you about trash 2 you can distort your audio in ways you never dreamed of with the trash modules 80 60 plus distortion algorithms and it's perfect for transforming your sound into something never before be heard uh, design your own unique distortions you can let your tracks inhabit any space with the convolve module there's a multi-band wave shaper which is fully customizable uh, you can also find a new voice make your audio speak and growl with two redesigned filter modules each one featuring new valve form and filters screaming peaks and no modulations you can start trashing your audio immediately with a new preset library and an ear-friendly limiter make sure that all your experiments don't blow anything up although i'm sure you could if you really tried 
Anyway, if you want to check out the Isotope Trash system, uh, all you have to do is go to isotope.com forward slash trash and you get a 10 day free demo as you do with all of their products. We Once again, we thank them very much for their sponsorship of the show. And of course, we've also got uh, um, a competition to announce. Uh, last week, we asked you to uh, tweet out, uh, what was it? It was... Uh, the hashtag shapeshifting, the ha hashtag trash2. And we have a winner and in the form of a chap called Greg Barnes, uh, G underscore Barnes UK. Well, that's with ES on the end of Barnes. Greg Barnes, if you want to get in touch, uh, then we will pass your details on to the Isotope Fairy and she will make sure that you get trash2 just for you. He tweeted, let's trash this 414, which is in reference to last week's show, which was uh, what we talked about with... Um, the uh, AKG 414 in a sort of homage to the number of the uh, of the show. So, And we also have a competition for this week as well. Uh, you can also win for, we won't be next week, but the week after we announce it, uh, win Isotope Trash. Uh, you need to tweet the hashtag this week, hashtag crunch and smash, one word, and the hashtag trash2 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. Yes, you do need to be on Twitter, but it's worth joining just for this. I mean, this thing's worth, you know, considerable amount of money, and it's free if you win. So tweet the hashtag crunch and smash, the hashtag trash2 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc., and we will pick a winner from the next available episode, which will be, uh, what's it, the t uh, sometime later in August, 12th, 19th, 25th. I think that's about right. Yeah, gosh, I managed to figure that one out. Anyway, um, that was Overbridge and the Roland Ira thing. Um, let's just have a look. Now, this is something that's quite interesting. New free DAW from Personas. Now, this is kind of fairly mind-blowing. Basically, what they've done is they've announced um, a free version of Studio One. It's Studio One 3, so you get all of the fancy stuff. But it's obviously limited, but only limited in the, in terms of the plugins and that side of it, as far as we could tell. There's unlimited audio tracks, unlimited MIDI tracks, buses and effects channels, but you've got nine audio native uh, effects, including Empire, Beat Delay, Chorus, Mix, Verb, and more. And I guess you were kind of quite excited about this, because, I mean, Studio One 3 seems to have been generating quite a lot of waves. You know, they've added... Yeah. It's one of those doors that we, we have this cyclical thing, don't we, where doors are in the ascendancy, they're adding great features, and then other ones mm -hmm. come along, and it seems to be Studio One's time at the moment. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a particularly interesting release for a free piece of software, because normally... The software is much, you know, that you get either free or you get included with various pieces of kit, um, Ableton Live Lite and various other ones. But this one is so much, I mean, it's like unlimited audio tracks and unlimited MIDI tracks. So that's a big one. Normally they're like restricted to eight tracks or something like that. So to see that unlimited uh, track count for a free piece of software is pretty cool. Uh, if you look at the um, the comparison between the different versions, you know, like, yeah, some of the, the headline stuff of Studio One version three, the, um, you know, the arrangement, the arranger track and the, the you know, there's various things that aren't included in it. Um, but the fact that it is pretty much, though, a complete multi channel, uh, you know, unlimited track DAW with a really useful selection of um, plugins. Uh, now, you can't bring your own VSTs into it or audio. Ah, okay. Unit. That's the big, that's the big one. So, I mean, this is obviously going to limit its appeal to lots of people. However, there is one um instrument included and that's the uh, presence xt sampler and it comes with uh, i think it's about a gig and a half samples but but it's not a sample player it's a fully featured sampler so to have multi-channel audio and a fully featured sampler is a pretty powerful thing i mean it makes me think that this would be an ideal piece of software for people who work entirely in the hardware domain and just want you know, a multi-track software, you know, for audio. Um, obviously, the, the plugins, you might find that's a limitation. But again, as we've talked often, certain creative limitations can be fantastic. And I was a bit mind blown by just how good this is. Have you, have you installed it? And the chat room is saying that uh, you do get uh, upgrade ads um, quite often in it. Um, but I mean, you know, you, nothing's totally for free. So, I mean, I don't think that's too great. <laughs> Unless, of course, it does interrupt your creative workflow. Didn't know about that. Whoops. <laughs> well, you know, uh, there's always a price to pay somewhere along the line. Yeah, but but even still, I mean, it. Um, I, yeah, because I've got the main software, I haven't put this, this one in. But the um, 
uh, you know, I, I, I thought what might be quite a nice thing is to do some sort of challenge where people, I think that's what's really nice. You could have some sort of, you could use it for certain musical challenges because everybody would have exactly the same thing and you couldn't bring anything. Oh, external. I see what you mean. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, that's a good marketing mm. idea. I know, but uh, interesting stuff. I, I don't know. What DAW are you using, Ty? What's your kind of what method of choice for um, writing and doing what you do? I mean, Mainly Nuendo. Right. I use, uh, yeah, Nuendo day to day. And then obviously I use live um, with the push um, if I'm doing something that's very loop based. But essentially day to day Nuendo. That, that's Nuendo on a Mac, right? Yeah. So uh, is yeah. that a live, pro- is, that, is there a product updates for that? Because I haven't heard anything or haven't spotted Completely. anything recently. It's really, it's really funny with Nuendo because everyone presumes that a Nuendo is very. Um, PC orientated, but it's absolutely not. No, I mean we're on version seven uh, of Nuendo, and it's unbelievably stable. So it's yeah, it's I, all it is is a it's a glorified kind of more uh, post pro version of um, Cubase. Uh, the interface looks very similar, but it's got a few more kind of um, pro media uh, functions and. Uh, but it's great and runs perfectly on a Mac. But um, no, they don't make a big thing of it. Um, this, I think, I kind of have mixed feelings about this. I think, generally speaking, I think it's a great idea. And I think they uh, are very clever because um, a lot of people, whether we want to you know, kind of believe it or not, they use crap software. And they, what every manufacturer is really trying to do is trying to get... Uh, there's people that genuinely cannot afford the software but want to be, you know, kind of playing and writing and whatever, to actually get them on their platform. And so it's almost the dream for these people because they suddenly have a piece of free software and they want to get them on that platform. And it's so it, it looks so sophisticated, apart obviously from the limitations, but it looks like a full-blown you know, good sequencing package. And once people get onto that platform, we know all too well that yeah, you, you don't know, change you easily, do you? To, absolutely. Once you get used to something, you stick with it just because you mm-hmm. get familiar. So if people are coming onto this uh, for free and they get drawn into that way of working and uh, they then will upgrade, which means that they'll be on that track and following that route. So, I mean, they've got their head screwed on, absolutely. And I think what Gaz was saying is right. If, In a way, almost the more limited they can make it with a few little carrots, a few little teasers to kind of just go, even as Gaz said, the fact that you get a full functioning sampler in itself, you could almost forget the forget the sequencing side of things. You've got a full-blown software sampler for free. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. You know, so that in itself, you're thinking... We know, oh, look, I'm not going to go back to the um, grumpy old men in the good old days, mm. and, you know, but think how much we were paying for samplers back when. Yeah, yeah. And there is, you know, there so- is a link as well. There's a link when you're saying about Nuendo, isn't there, that when Studio One first came out, it was some of the people, I think, who were involved in Nuendo design. I think the orig- I, I might be wrong really? about this, but something like the original designers of Nuendo broke away from Steinberg and created Studio One. Right. Wow, okay. so that's interesting. I know, Dave, are you, are you uh, I mean, you know, we're not likely to jump DAWs at the moment, but it's quite, a, a, you know, the, the summer is traditionally the time when you get these kind of crazy software bundle deals and, you know, offers and all that sort of thing. And this seems like about as as good an offer as you can really, uh, really expect, right? Yeah, I mean, I like uh, Studio 1.3, is it? Yeah, version 3 just came out. Yeah, yeah I've got a copy of that. Um, I was testing a load of stuff with that fairly recently and was like, actually, I like the layout of this and certain things seem really intuitive. But yeah, as Ty says, you know, there's loads of... The entire the industry is kind of littered, isn't it, with we have Pro Tools free and then I remember when people were trying to get into CompUSA with kind of cute bases and light or whatever it was, you know. It's just kind of... But everyone's desperate to kind of hook everybody in and get them into their, their way of thinking in order... You know that when they have got the money to upgrade, that they'll go that route, uh, and I think that's probably behind this. I don't know. I haven't downloaded this, so I don't know what you know MIDI editing, how detailed that would be, and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, strikes me as a really cool thing. I mean, particularly with the unlimited audio tracks, that's like, like Gaz says, you know, it's yeah, really limited to eight. 
but yeah, very cool. Well, it's interesting, as we know, I mean, there was that whole thing back, remember Pro Tools Free when that first came out. I mean, we, I was certainly one of those people that used to use it just purely to kind of but get delivered stems and then or edits that I could then bounce out and uh, I, I mean that was an eight track limited and that, that kind of worked for Avid back when they were sort of doing sensible things. Um, <coughs> <I'd say>. But <laughs> uh, <that>? but yeah, <laughs> well, that's a good question. So you know there there, are, there is a great track history. So if you want to check it out, get to Personas and uh, and try that out. So it's pretty cool. And in fact, speaking of similar deals, we've also got this. So this is another one of uh, Slate's extravaganzas. This is another kind of. Uh, this is a very salesy video, but I mean, when you look at the, the, the names of the titles. Let's talk about them. High quality plugins can help you make great sounding audio productions. As you may know, at Slate Digital. We <laughs> yeah, well, perhaps that perhaps that approach doesn't work for everybody. Um, I won't say what I saw <laughs> behind the scenes there. Um, as somebody said in the comments of the YouTube, that you get through nine minutes without a single blink, which is kind of quite impressive. But I mean, essentially, the details of this are, you know, that they, they're, they're introducing a, a yearly plan. It's the Mixmaster bundle, 240 bucks a year, and you get all their plugins and all the ones they're going to make, apart from the Lexicon LX40 Reverb, which they've just announced. It's 299 with that, and then. Uh, you also get a $99 rebate, and if you go for the Lexicon version, which is $299 a year, uh, two $99 coupons. Um, so, you know, that's that's not far off, you know, only 100 bucks. I mean, I guess it doesn't happen every year. But you can also do it monthly with with 20 bucks a month, and it doesn't have to be concurrent. So you can just dip in 20 bucks if you've got a project, which actually I think that's actually not a bad idea, and that's quite an interesting concept. I mean, God knows how I, – I, it, it is iLock, and I think you have to have – you have to buy either the yearly bundle, you get a free iLock, or monthly, two months, and you'll get a free iLock. I mean, there has to be some copy protection with something like this. I'll come to you first, Dave, because, I mean, you are a software developer. I mean, do you think there's any merit in this approach? I mean, because in many ways, you know, the industry is kind of looking in the, much of the same way that any digital project product at the moment is looking for ways to make us buy them in some respect rather than just download or crack or whatever. Uh, yes, I do. I think it's particularly... I don't think it's pertinent with instruments because I've always been an advocate of, you know, you, you invest time and effort and energy into an instrument and then you'll get the best out of that. And that requires a certain amount of commitment. But I've been talking to Chris recently about, you know, for example, I may be halfway through a project and I'll go, I need one of those. And the logic on their website was pretty sound from my perspective, you know. I, don't want to spend kind of five, six hundred bucks on something when I just want that. Actually, I would rent it, but probably for that project, not on an annual thing. But they have to be very simple interfaces and, uh, yeah, simple interfaces and sound great. I have to say that the Slate stuff sounds great, but I find him intensely irritating. <laughs> he does have that effect on some people, yes. But, I mean, there's no doubt that there's some pretty cool project products. I oh, know, Ty, are you, uh, do you use any of the Slate? Well, you do. You've got the Raven, yes. haven't you? So, uh, yeah, you... I use... Well, I've got, obviously, hardware-wise, I've got a, a Raven MTI. But, yeah, I use, I use quite a lot of his plugins. And um, they are... No, they are very good. As Dave said, they, have, they, they sound good. The interface is... Uh, yeah, everything about them, they're good. You know, I mean, um, the idea of the whole subscriptions thing. I guess for you, I don't know. It, it I mean, makes more just, sense I for think, you to own them, perhaps, because, you know, you... Yeah, just... it, it does make more sense. But I'm in the, you know, obviously I'm in the fortunate position where, as we said before, it's work. So, you know, they kind of pay for themselves. And I think the only things I object to are, one, I think he, you know, he does, the company do make some good products. I think, as you say, the way that they're sold, you either really get or you don't get. I mean, personally, I kind of don't get it. It's just a bit OTT for me. But maybe that's just because we're British and we're not. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, no, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the Americans really will take to that. No offence to But that's fantastic. That's good. But for me, it's a bit kind of in your face, which obviously over here we're not so keen on. Um, I think the only other thing I slightly object to is he keeps using this word of it's free, it's free, it's free, it's free. Uh, it's a, an amazing offer, but all you're really doing is you're, you're renting them and it's, it's, you don't actually own them at any point. And so it's not free. And even then it's free, it's free, it's free. And then gets to the end and says, it's only going to cost you. So you could argue, well, it's an amazing offer. Yes, but 
please don't tell me it's free because it's not free. And I think the concern then is, again, it's exactly the same as the Studio One. They drag you in. You get used to these plugins. You use them all over your product, your projects. You get to the, this time next year when you'll carry on working on your projects <laughs> and they go, oh, by the way, <laughs> you've now got to pay another year's subscription. No, you, could, buy, some you, pe- could, you could just buy a month. You don't have to buy okay. oh, You, you could just enough. dip in however well, you want. But yes, I take your point. But they're still dragging you into the fact that you become to rely on these plugins, which is great. That's how, you know, kind of that's how we use our favorite plugins. But it's almost a case of, you you know, once you kind of keep using them, they keep reeling you in year after year after year after year. You will be spending a lot of money in years to come if you carry on using them. That's all. I mean, it's a great way yeah. of doing it. But it's no different to the the thing where you now kind of essentially a lot of people just rent cars rather than buying cars. You just never actually own them. You're always just, you know, carrying on. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. I know, Gaz, I don't know if you use any of his stuff. I mean, I know a lot of his plugins do have a a, a great reputation. Yeah, no, I I, I don't actually. So I'm not really the right person to ask. I haven't used any of them. I think I I echo in Ty's sort of concerns there, uh, you know, to, to be locked out of your projects down the line if you're not, you know, it, you know, and having, I don't know how that would work. That just they would just be disabled, I suppose. Would they? You, you go to load in a project, and the eye lock has expired. The, the 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 plugins just won't instantiate, I suppose. But yeah, that's that's what would happen. Yeah. Hmm. That yeah, that's the downside of it, then, isn't it? I suppose, as you say, though, you could just enable it if you're just going back to something. You could just enable it for that one project for that month or so. So, okay, yeah. I think I we've mean, thought about it. Twenty bucks, but, as you said, it's only the price of a pizza. It is an interesting <laughs> thing, though, because I've spent such a lot of money on software. <laughs> That's a big pizza. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not. Uh, I spent, I've stomach. spent a lot of money on software over the years, and it's a strange one, the, the, the feeling of value you get from software. I think with some instruments, I'm uh, not just saying it, I mean, the GeForce stuff represents good value for money. I've, come, I've been using that for years, but the some plugins, mm, you know, when you spend a lot of money on plugins and don't use them very much, at least this is a good way to, you know, to go through the whole slate well, yeah, I mean, the fact is that you could just spend 20 bucks if you've already got an eye lock and just try them all out and go, yeah, I quite like those. You might want to buy one or two of them or you might want to yeah, just go do well it for, for a that. year and then you've got a hundred dollars. Is it a hundred dollars well, no, off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so. And, so, and to be fair, yeah. hmm. and, and to be fair, um, I mean, I, I got an email a couple of days ago um, directly from not, I mean, not that. People who own the the software, the you know, own the previous plugins. We all got an email basically saying that um, maybe he didn't explain it from him explaining maybe he didn't explain it well enough uh, in the launch. And so, if you actually own the software, you also you get loads of other deals to do with the fact that you'll get so many months uh, free of everything else. You basically get, in other words. The people that have bought his software, he's not leaving them out in the cold. All oh, right, well that's he's good. kind of he's kind of mm. drawing them in and saying you've bought them, we'll give you free however many months of all right, products okay. that you don't. Own. I guess that's so, one of the advantages of an iLock. You know, I mean, a lot of people really don't get on with that, but that that means you know you can that presumably all of that licensing and time licensing is something that's just part of the interface between their their system and you know the software world so in many ways that's kind of straightforward i don't know if uh, if itunes or any similar place where you might be able to buy plugins are going to offer the same sort of thing but it might make sense for some because some plugins are expensive and you don't need to use them all the time but mm. you know it just depends on whether it it raises the overall level of revenue rather than just has you know a big bump at release and then every time you do extra promos i don't know so it seems like um, well, adobe with a adobe with a sort of pioneers of this way of working weren't they yeah but they were way more expensive five five years ago so yeah but they you know when uh, when they first came out with that i was confused about it but it's obviously proved to be successful because i think that's what they're trying to copy that yeah but they they didn't give anybody the other any options that's the only way you can do it isn't it or if i remember correct i don't know yeah maybe i don't know sorry dave you are changed it will just change right yeah, yeah. Create a like cloud and all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think I think at the end of the 
I think at the end of the day, if, if it works as I think they want it to work, which is essentially you get everything, it's almost like the Waves way of working where you kind of get everything. And you can kind of, and, sorry, the UAD way of working where you kind of get everything, you can trial it. Uh, and then if you like it, you then buy it. I think that's kind of what they're aiming for. And I think that's good because, yeah, in a way, there will be certain of those plugins that you don't come with or don't earn their keep. And you don't feel that you've spent the $300 on one plugin and then you'll hardly use it. So though, hopefully there will be some that you'll find that you use and um, and they're hoping you'll then yeah, buy yeah. them. I suppose that's, carry on renting that's inspired, isn't it? Because essentially you're paying 20 bucks for a trial. <laughs> you don't have to you do see, that. Yeah, thinking, exactly. So, yeah. You know, if I was working on a project and I was like, you know what, I need I need a pull tech. That's what I need. I need a good plug-in pull tech. But rather than spend, you know, a couple of hundred bucks or whatnot, whatnot, I'd probably go, you know what, let's just do the uh, do these. And then obviously you can test out the others as and when. But if it's for a project, for a client, I'm not worried about the fact that it's going to time out after a month particularly. I just want that for a specific task. And bounce it. Without going through, bounce you know, it. a massive great bundle deal. I mean, I've always thought the isotope stuff, you know, I love what they do. But what's happening now is that, and this is across the board, you know, stuff, individual plugins are getting, becoming more and more and more complex. Sometimes we, if particularly if we're on a deadline, it's like, I just want something that does that job and I want it really simply. It needs about three or four knobs. I mean, amazingly for us, the more simple instruments with the more simple interfaces are the ones that probably sell the most. Right. Because the pros are just going... I haven't got time to read a manual. I haven't got time mm -hmm. to delve into that. I just want something that sounds amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I guess it's but just an, it's an indicator of the change of things. You know, we talked about the music industry changing. You know, from the on the consumer end, and I think you know we're bound to see those sort of changes happening from the uh, creator side as well. Just because it's just easier to for 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 people who make stuff to kind of rely on different sales models. You know, because it's you know it's it's a tough world out there. So you've got to get it any way you can really whichever end of the uh, of the process you are <coughs> excuse me okay um what do we have oh yeah this was this was sent in via robbie this is a lovely way to uh, perhaps end the show this is um i i wasn't sure what piece of music is this is from the um i've got it on the hokkaido garden show in uh taisetsu which does look very lovely, very serene. And on it goes, but it's very beautifully shot. I'm not sure how loud, I mean, this is quite loud, the way that they mic'd it up. I'm not quite sure how, how you'd be able to hear that. Because only tiny little bits of wood. And it looks like it needs to be reset <laughs> by somebody. <laughs> but it's a lovely idea, and th th this whole kind of notion of it. This does make me feel quite peaceful. Do who knows what that piece of music is? I should know it, but I can't think. It's bar. It. Bark. I think it's. I think it's bar. I could be completely wrong, but I think it's bar. I think someone will correct me. Just like the idea that this is this, this is endlessly running and it has some way of mechanically resetting itself. It's a lovely idea in this sort of serene go. But the, the festival at the Tokyo, uh, not Tokyo, I, I'm guessing this is in Japan. There's some beautiful looking um, just imagery and, and and scenery. So it looks like a lovely place to spend the day or perhaps longer because it looks like a massive slot. Um, Robbie passed this one up. Dave, fancy one of those kind of sculptures in your garden? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. It would walk terribly nice. in the in the rain. Now I'm guessing in a tropical yeah, I don't climate. Yeah, it wouldn't survive. It wouldn't survive the wind up here. That's for sure. But uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's odd. This isn't it. It's quite old. This video. I've been sent it about kind of a hundred times yeah. by different people. Oh, I do beg your pardon. Um, I'm no, behind the curve. Mm. Yeah, no, it's really cool. But I, it's a. I was using it as a kind of benchmark of possibly how cynical I've become over the years. <laughs> you just kind of look at it and go. Yeah, well, somebody's got a bit of time on their hands. Or a nice grant, I'd imagine. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's lovely. I, I, no, it is very good. It is lovely. I, Gaz, you were at, um, uh, I forget the name of the uh, the festival that you did in uh, Japan. 
Uh, I played a few, but Fuji Rock, I think. Do they have these kind of things in the woods? Is it big on this kind of uh, installation art? (laughs) Um, Sort of, yeah. I mean, um, Fuji Rock's a great festival in that festivals are kind of circular but fuji rock takes place in a in a um in a, a ski resort sort of during the summertime so so actually all the stages sort of go down the valley and the the walks between the stages you go along these boardwalks through sort of, and there's um lanterns and it's beautiful it's so nice so so i could imagine this running alongside it would make sense in that way but i have to say one little uh, one thing i remembered about the japanese people are just so unbelievably polite people were at fuji rock it's an outdoor festival the ones who were smoking cigarettes they had their own little portable ashtrays that they rather than rather than knocking the ash into the outside you know little ashtrays outside I would like to say that uh, Zen artist pointed out in the uh, in in the in the chat room that it get co- it get co- it gets covered in bird guano, <laughs> which could be a problem <laughs> actually. I wouldn't want to be the person who has to clean that. Good point. Lovely notion though. Todd, have you got any uh, sculptures, sonic sculptures, in your neck of the woods? Do you know I actually have I have something in the garden. I generally do have something in the garden. A local <laughs> sculptor made uh, some sculptures i commissioned some sculptures in the garden and they weren't meant to be musical they're they, they're kind of called um they're kind of seed pods so you get one circle and then you have all the stems coming off it and on the end of each stem you have other little um uh circle bits of me- metal i'm going to say and you can roll them around they're like big seed pods and you can roll them around and uh, his name's uh, christopher townsend and he's an amazing sculptor and um but he knew, obviously, he, I knew him and he knew what I did. And so he also made uh, a, a metal pole kind of stick for me to actually hit all the different pods with because they all play different notes. Ah. So it wasn't meant to be a musical sculpture, but it ended up being a musical sculpture. And it's uh, it's fantastic. And I keep threatening to sample it and actually use it on something. But but this is beautiful. I mean, as, as Dave said, this has been around for, for some time now. And it... It is beautiful, but I think this is just that bit of me that's just going, life's really too short, as beautiful as it is, because not not only the fact that each of those pieces of wood have to be tuned, obviously, but um, even just the, the, the width and delay, you know, someone sat down and calculated how wide they have to be to be a, a quaver and then how with the little trilled bits and and they have to obviously place them it's just so precise. The amount of work and, and effort that's gone into that is huge, absolutely huge. And there's just that bit of me going, but please, <laughs> you you know, that's, you, there's You there's could so do so many other things with that. What was interesting to me is I noticed it's kind of, they must be very quiet because, uh, I mean, obviously the way that it's recorded, you can hear the little kind of the ball rolling of the gr- on the grain of the wood so i'm, I'm wondering what how what, how much noise it makes in the environment it'd be uh, it'd be interesting to hear what it's like in there if it's a bit windy for instance where you know the trees are doing their thing but that that would be uh, it's, i'd like to see it i mean i'd love to go to japan and get because I've, I've been to tokyo once but i've never been anywhere other than you know the urban part of that and i'd like to see some of the countryside and i've heard it's very beautiful so uh, i like the serenity of that which kind of leads me to the that this next part of the topic which we did touch touch on uh la at the beginning of the show which was kind of what it's summer you know traditionally we're all going to have a little bit of a break or some of us may have had our breaks or considering our breaks i mean but aside from that what do you do to kind of uh to kind of recharge your batteries and just kind of clear your head. I mean, I, I, Ty, you were saying, you know, you need a holiday, but it has to be quite long for you to empty your head in that space. I mean, or is it just lack of work that does that for you? No, <laughs> I dream of lack of work sometimes. It's no, it's um, it's difficult doing, you know, kind of because it's it's a constant basically work wise. I mean, if I, you know, if I really wanted to, I could just work 24 seven. 365 days a year and I kind of don't it isn't that far off that what I actually do and so holidays are a big thing for me but it does take a lot of time for my head to switch off because my head is just constant it's just constantly going whether whatever I'm doing wherever I am and even when I'm just in the car it is constantly going and so 
So, yeah, it's difficult, but, I mean, it's, and it also sounds really cliché that, you know, for me it's just listening to music because it's just, you know, it's That's like what... a busman's holiday. Ah, no, well, that's interesting. I know, Dave, yeah. Dave you know, um, I'm guessing it must be very similar. I mean, I, I know you don't code, but I mean, I imagine you probably run into this because, you know, your coders presumably have to fill their heads with any project. I mean, it, as it is when you're programming a thing, you do have to kind of almost ingest all the facts and hold them there in space. And do you, do you find that your coders are better after they've had a holiday or rusty? <laughs> I don't know. I can't really comment on that. Uh, I know that one of ours has just had the most amazing trip, uh, which he hasn't actually finished telling us about in its entirety yet, but it's just like hilarious from start to finish, uh, going around Madagascar in a boat. Uh, and yes, that was kind of... But you see, he, he's the same as Ty. I mean, I think what amazed me about when I met Ty over here is that Ty was saying that... Uh, he has about six projects on the go or six compositions on the go at any given time, which for me, that amount of headspace is just slightly insane. And that's very much on a parallel with programmers. You know, they will be, particularly this guy, he'll be thinking about things. For me, I've never, I've ne I've only ever taken a two week holiday once in my life. I get loads of, I get into loads of trouble about it. Weeks about what I can do. But then again, that's kind of once a year. I'm pretty bad on that front. Uh, for me to recharge the batteries. It's a weird one as well because summer is actually in software world, summer is the time where most of us have got our heads down getting shit ready for. Uh, sorry, I said shit. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. I've done <laughs> yeah, worse. You, you, yeah, you did worse. Um, <laughs> getting stuff ready for uh, September, you know, uh, September and. Uh, the following year so we're all kind of heads down at the minute I mean look at me I'm unshaved unkempt I've been working my nuts off. to take a break to recharge the batteries I don't know I find as, as I'm getting older I have to stop I have to get away from it running is a great help uh, but I have to kind of get away from it in order to kind of come back with the enthusiasm level that I need in order to kind of get through huge swathes of work yeah yeah, no, I can I can fully understand. I was just thinking about the last time I took a two-week holiday. It was in Ilfracoom, and it rained almost the entire time, and we were with a toddler, and all the beaches in Ilfracoom are rocky. So you can imagine yeah. what fun that was. It was, oh, that uh, it, yeah, extreme. I, I actually, I, yeah, well, it would have been without the toddler who was learning to walk. So you can imagine you were just thinking head injury almost every step of the way or just had to be holding the hat. It, it, so it wasn't really, yeah. But the, I, I and mean, I walk with a limp. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Gaz, what about you? Well, it's funny you're saying about recharging the batteries. That's what I seem to do when I go away is just spend such a lot of time recharging the batteries. I mean, this thing here, for instance, goes with me quite often. <laughs> And the amount of battery recharging that goes on to get that thing all up and going. Um, <laughs> and that one, yeah. Yeah. Oops. Yes. He's but, frozen. Nope. No, he's back. He's coming back. He's coming nope, back. back. Just back. a nice pause. Oh, what's going on? Oh. I'm there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I just can't see you. You're, you you look like a sort of. Batteries. You look like the bottom shot of a moonlit sky at the moment. Yeah. Well. No. Nope. I don't know what's happened there. Recharging my torch. Um, yeah. Didn't, but I, I mean, batteries. I take when I go away. I take a load of stuff with me. I can't help it. I can, and I, and like Ty, I can't. I I really just can't switch off. God, not like my screen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, don't know what's happened there. No, well, <laughs> I, I guess maybe it's take, decided to take an enforced holiday. Uh, speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of holidays, obviously next week uh, we are not going to uh, be having a show. Actually, that's one thing I did want to uh, mention briefly. Um, this was uh, something that uh, Pete Brown, I don't know if you saw last week, if you got the opportunity to see last week, uh, we did a special on Windows uh, Audio and MIDI, which was really interesting. I thought it was anyway, and, and Pete was a, a very generous guest. I mean, he it was like a kind of thousand mile an hour brain dump of all the things that he had to say about it, but it's absolutely jam-packed with 
fascinating information. And he's written this application, which is a MIDI scripting app, which is kind of very similar to what we use uh, here at Sonic for switching. You know, th this is all done via MIDI script scripting and all that sort of things. And uh, he gave us full, full, um, full props. As we were the inspiration for him writing this. So now, if you use PowerShell on Windows 10, you can translate w uh, MIDI uh, messages and turn them into things that PowerShell can do, which I'm guessing is kind of uh, system stuff and launching applications with parameters and all that kind of thing and it'll also output MIDI so it's a, he's kind of put his money when his mouth is and written the application that will allow us uh, allow us to do that so if you're into that sort of thing I've, I installed Windows 10 on the Surface Pro 3 that we got here all went pretty well without a hitch um, I, I, I for some reason I think I assumed it would run everything so I was running the I've got the beat step well, I did have the BeatStep Pro. I think the battery must have run out on that camera or something. Uh, I'm doing the review there, and I was running all everything from that, but it just couldn't handle Ableton and the XAir software and all these other things at the same time. But apart from that, everything seemed fairly stable. It's just not so much from uh, uh, the um, the audio side. I wasn't able to test that. But um, maybe it's a good time to uh, say goodbye. I have a little bit of editing to do for the video version. As uh, <laughs> 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 so it'll be a slight delay in, uh, in uh, before it makes it online. But I want to say thank you very much to everybody for joining us. And also, don't forget, if you want to uh, enter the competition, let me just find that window there. Uh, you can win Isotope Trash 2, which is an awesome uh, distortion and mangling plugin. You just need to tweet the, ha the hashtag Crunch and Smash and the hashtag Trash 2 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. And then we will announce the winner. I think we said it was the 25th of August when we return. So uh, thank you very much. And also thank you, everybody in the chat room. It's another full chat room. I don't know how people find the time, especially at summer. Aren't you on all hot? Well, I guess, like us, Dave, that summer is a busy time. And that's what it is here, too. I'm trying to get everything done so I can uh, be ready to go out but uh, and, and leave it all behind for a week. Anyway, Dave, thank you very much for joining us this week. It's a real pleasure. Uh, did you not say you had some news to give? Oh, yes. Blimey, yes. Uh, drum roll, really. Uh, we have back versions of AAX, uh, Mtron Pro and VSM oh, released cool. today. Uh, there will never, ever, ever be any PC AAX versions. I can promise you that because <laughs> I'm, I arbitrarily made that decision. No, that's not true. We made that decision. Uh, but the Mac versions are there just to, just for those two instruments. And first person to email asking where the rest of the instruments gets a smack. <laughs> is, that a new, is that a new plugin? <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, that's great news. I'll be uh, eagerly awaiting the press release. Oh, and some, and some new sounds for Oddity 2, done by an amazing sound designer who will remain nameless at the minute. But, yeah, no, really brilliant. Oh, great. Well, thank you for that snippet of information. Um, and uh, we will see you next time. So thank you very much. Okay. And, of course, uh, Mr. Ty Unwin, who uh, very kindly took time out of his busy schedule, I hope to, I like to think maybe this does in some small way a way to clear your head because uh, if you have Absolutely. to communicate and focus on this, it's, you can't be thinking about melodic motifs. This is an hour off for me, believe me. Actually, talking of Oddity 2, the, uh, there's a remix that I'm doing at the moment which is absolutely full of it. Absolutely mm -hmm. stunkingly full of it. Um, get get yeah, the sounds. It's, it's, I have all of this stuff and... I'm using a, a plugin. Well, so it's it's great. Excellent. Well, thank you again okay. for joining us. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. No, to have thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Mr. Moonlight there, Gaz Williams, yeah. uh, whose camera has given up. I don't know what happened. It couldn't take. It was that talk of other devices. Maybe the iOS, it, the, your iPad just said, no, nope, I'm not having it. It I'm... didn't like switching cameras, did it? it no. It you, saw see... what, you saw the Volkers and stuff, yeah, didn't we you? Did. But then it didn't switch back. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining us. It's been great no, to have a, you on. It's a pleasure. Well. So, again, just if anyone's that green man next week, come and find me. Midnight midnight Friday in the Cinedrome. Excellent. Right. Well, thank you very much. That's it for this week. Once again, thank you to our chat room, our very uh, loyal show. Thank you very much. And remember, if you want to uh, get in touch with me and you're the winner of Isotope Trash, uh, let me just see what's your name. You're, you are Greg Barnes, G underscore Barnes UK. If you can get in quick, then I should be able to sort it out before I go on holiday. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for Sonic Talk uh, 415. That's it for this week. <laughs>